So, we meet again. Hi, everybody. We will get started. Oh, the Druckmann gang. <laughs> Don't you have anything else to do? All right, let's say hi to everybody who's here, who's here early, all the early birds, like, uh, <clears throat> like Allison and Anna Claire and, and Maddie, Julie and Josh and, and uh, uh, oh, who else is here? I'm sorry, I can't get to you all. The Seagull girls and Aaron and, and uh, Henry and, and Lauren, Emily and Madeline and Mishra, the Mishra family. Uh, Nora and Eloise are here. Hi, you guys. Thanks for coming. Allie, Jillian and Carter and, and uh, Ava and Chase are here and uh, Shane is here, and Seth, and Hope, and Evan, and, and Ziva, and Zisha, I hope I pronounced that right, and uh, oh, so many wonderful people, Lita, and Ezra are here, and Chloe, and Karen, Chester, oh, there, somebody from Chester, <laughs> and Abigail in Holly Springs, North Carolina, uh, oh, Everson in Toronto, I'm glad you're here, uh, Lucas is here, and Kaylee from Long Island, Lucas from Kentucky and uh, Elizabeth is here and the Kinney boys and Ethan from Wisconsin and the Talty family and Julian Sophia's oh from Belgium are you in Belgium uh, oh, oh wrong piece of paper okay <laughs> we'll start in uh, four minutes you guys in the meantime I'll keep saying hello to people uh, as many as I can get to like uh, the Cohen boys and Alice and Aubrey and uh, ooh, Katie and Christian and and uh, Kaden and Raven and Liz and McKaylin and Alex and Zach. Hi, you guys. Gabe and Penelope in Germany. You kidding me? Uh, Kaden in Kansas, uh, Kansas City. I'm sorry. Uh, Alessandra and Nathaniel. Uh, Kelly kids. How you doing? Ellie from Illinois is here, and Lucas and Zoe from Amarillo, and Bobby and Jackson, uh, uh, and uh, Julia and Natalie from Medford, Oregon, one of my favorite places in the world. Jack and John and Sebastian and Isabella, and uh, uh, Parker and Sydney and Eli, and we got uh, three minutes to go, you guys, three minutes until we get started. Uh, Emmett's here, and Jesse, and Avery, and Addison. Hi to you all. Seamus and Declan are here, and uh, somebody from uh, Olivia and Paige are here from Ohio, and Lila and Elliot, and Harper, and Nate, and Waverly from Baltimore. Ralph Hammelbacher. Hey, Ralph, how are you doing? <laughs> What's he doing here? Uh, Harry and Nathan, and... Uh, uh, I wish I could. I wish I could see all your names, Brenna and Nathan. We've got uh, two minutes to go, you guys. Two minutes before we get started. Uh, who else is here? <clears throat> I see you all. I see you all staring at me. You think I can't see you? I see every one of you. You're all spread out in front of me. <laughs> you don't think I can't see you? Madison is here, and Mallory and Magnolia and. Uh, um, 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 where's somebody from Toronto? Okay. Uh, Mason, South Carolina, and Oscar, and, and uh, Koa, Koa, and Julissa, and Josh. And we have one minute to go. So I have to, I have to take a sip of water. I have to stop reading the screen. Okay. Take a sip, and we will get started in less than one minute. You guys excited? I'm excited. Okay. <clears throat> it's raining out here in New York City, you guys. Hope it's nicer where you are. Okay. Okay. Any second now. The clock on the wall will click over to 2 o'clock East Coast time, and we'll get started. It's go time, baby. Thanks for coming, you guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Dan Gutman. I'm the author of the My Weird School series. 
um, and lots of other books for kids too. And let's uh, today we're going to finish our book that we've been reading all week. Isn't this exciting? We're going to finish our book today. Uh, but first, let's do the question of the day, which comes from Emerson from Toronto. Emerson uh, asks, do you have a favorite My Weird School character? And the answer is yes, I do, uh, actually. And kids usually think it's going to be AJ, but my favorite character is Mr. Klutz, the principal. And he's also the only the only uh, adult character who is really based on real people. Because, you know, I visit a lot of schools and very often the principal will, will uh, make a deal with the students. They'll say like, uh, if you kids read a million books, you know, or, or achieve some kind of academic goal, I will, uh, I will kiss a pig, for instance. Uh, so, you know, I, I saw all these principals doing these weird things. So I thought, okay, that would be a great character for my series. So that's why Mr. Klutz is my favorite character. Great question, Emerson. Thank you. Okay. So this week we've been reading <clears throat> Dr. Snow has got to go. And, uh, uh, as you know, uh, Dr. Snow is uh, a, a famous scientist who's been brought in because the kids' STEM scores, science, technology, engineering, math, have been bad. And and Mr. Docker, the science teacher, brings in his old buddy, his old college roommate, uh, Dr. Snow, to help uh, you know bring them up. And of course, like all the adults in the My Weird School series, he's crazy and possibly evil, actually. And the kids have, and oh, he has decided he's going to have a big science fair um, so that the kids can, you know, get more into science. And the kids have decided that he's he's evil so that they have to, like, get some dirt on him. And that's where we left off on chapter six of the book. So today we're going to start on chapter seven, which is titled Galileo in the Library. All right. You guys ready? I'm ready. Gather around the old computer screen, the old big screen TV, the old smartphone or laptop or tablet, whatever you're watching me on, and we will read Galileo in the library. So we still had to get some dirt on the snowman, but how? We need to play it cool, Alexia said. Let's just pretend everything is normal. The snowman will show his true colors. Then we can nail him. Huh? What do colors have to do with anything? People talk funny. That afternoon, we had library class with Mrs. Rupi. We walked a million hundred miles to the media center, which used to be called the library before they changed the name. Nobody knows why. When we got to the media center, Mrs. Rupi wasn't there. Instead, there was some guy who looked a lot like Mrs. Rupi with a beard. She's always pretending to be somebody else. One time, she dressed up like Neil Armstrong. Mrs. Rupi is loopy. Okay, <laughs> we'll read that another time. <clears throat> Why do you have a beard today, Mrs. Rupi? Ryan asked. Who's Mrs. Rupi? said Mrs. Rupi. I'm Galileo, the famous 16th century scientist. Wait, I said, you only have one name? No, said Galileo. Galileo was just my first name. So, so what's your last name? asked Andrea. Galilei. Your first name is Galileo and your last name is Galilei, asked Michael. That's right, said Galileo Galilei. It sounded so nice. My parents made it my name twice. I'm surprised you never heard of me. I discovered the moons of Jupiter and the rings of Saturn with my early telescope. I was the first person see, to see craters on the moon. I'm from Italy. Here's a picture of uh, <laughs> Galileo who is actually, of course, Mrs. Rupi in costume. Okay. <clears throat> I'm from Italy. I like pizza, said Ryan. Everybody likes pizza, said Galileo. Hey, I hear you're going to have a science fair next week. Yes, said Andrea. 
Each of us has to, has to make a science project. Well, you came to the right place, said Galileo. There are lots of books in the media center filled with fun science projects for kids. Galileo passed out a bunch of books for us to look over. Oh, cool, said Neil. It says here that you can build a catapult with just a plastic spoon, some rubber bands, and popsicle sticks. It shoots marshmallows. That would make a great project for the science fair, said Galileo. You know, science is all about asking why questions. Why is the sky blue? Why do fish swim and birds fly? Can you think of a why question? Yeah, I said, why do we have to do a science project? Galileo passed out. I mean, he passed out pencils and papers so we could take notes and draw pictures for our science projects. I'm going to build a pasta rocket, said Ryan. It uses uncooked pasta, mouthwash, and yeast for fuel. I'm going to build a fizz inflator, said Michael. I just need to put baking soda and vinegar in a soda bottle and attach a balloon to the end to inflate it. The reaction makes carbon dioxide to inflate the balloon. I'm going to build an exploding lunch bag, said Alexia. You just take a, a Ziploc freezer bag and fill it with warm water, baking soda, and vinegar. I'm going to build a flying drone, I said. Drones are cool. I always wanted to have my own drone. I was drawing a picture of my drone when I got another great idea. I could attach some Porky's pork sausages to the bottom of my drone so it could deliver sausages by air. Then you wouldn't have to go to the supermarket when you're in the mood for a pork sausage. It was genius. Maybe doing a project with Porky's pork sausages would help me win the grand prize and make Andrea lose. What are you going to make for your science project, Andrea? Asked Emily. Andrea was covering her worksheet with her hands so nobody could see it. I'm working on a secret project, she said mysteriously. Ooh, what is it? Emily asked. If I told you, it wouldn't be a secret, Andrea replied. <clears throat> Andrea will do anything to win the grand prize at the science fair. She's afraid that one of us is going to try and steal her idea. What is her problem? We were all drawing pictures and making lists of materials we we're going to need for our science projects. And you'll never believe who walked through the door at that moment. Nobody. You can't walk through a door. Doors are made out of wood. But you'll never believe who walked through the doorway. It was the snowman. He was holding a machine that looked like a leaf blower. Dr. Snow, said Galileo, to what do we owe the pleasure of your company? That's grown-up talk for, what are you doing here? I wanted to see what projects the students were planning for the science fair, the snowman replied. But first, take a look at my new invention. He pulled a rope, and the engine on the leaf blower roared to life. It was loud. A blast of air shot out the end. And here's a picture, one of Jim's pictures of Dr. Snow turning on his, uh, what appears to be a leaf blower. Looks like a leaf blower to me. <clears throat> wow, we all said, which is mom upside down. That's a, that's a cool leaf blower, Dr. Snow, said Andrea. Oh, it's not a leaf blower, said the snowman. I call it the birthday blower. It's a machine for blowing out birthday candles. You know how it's hard to blow out that last candle on your birthday cake? If you have a birthday blower, it blows the candles out for you. That is cool, I said, even though I didn't think it was all that cool. The snowman walked around the class and looked at what each of us was planning for the science fair. Neil described his rubber band powered catapult that shoots marshmallows. Yes, 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 shouted the snowman. Ryan described his pasta rocket. 
Excellent, shouted the snowman. Alexia described her exploding Ziploc lunch bag. Perfect, shouted the snowman. Michael described his fizz inflator. Fascinating, shouted the snowman. I described my remote controlled flying sausage delivery drone. Genius, shouted the snowman. The snowman loved all our science fair projects. Well, except for Andrea's secret project, of course. She wouldn't let him see what she was working on. Yes, 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 shouted the snowman, rubbing his hands together. This is going to be the greatest science fair in the history of science fairs. Well, that's chapter seven. Are you ready for chapter eight? The last chapter in the book? Okay, it's gonna be called Welcome to the Science Fair. Ooh. Okay, this is it, you guys. The big surprise ending. <clears throat> we spent the next week making our projects. My mom and dad helped me build my remote-controlled flying sausage delivery drone. It was the coolest. It had to be cooler than that secret lame project Andrea was working on. Finally, it was the day of the science fair. When I got to school, there was electricity in the air. Well, not really. If there was electricity in the air, we all get electrocuted. But all our parents and teachers were there. Galileo was there. The owner of Porky's Pork Sausages, Peter Porky, was there. And of course, Mrs. Ella Mentry was there. She was walking with crutches because she'd hurt her leg in the great egg drop challenge. The walls of the gym were covered with science posters and banners. Before the opening ceremony, we got to walk around and look at all the science projects. One girl made a periscope out of a milk carton. Some boy made a hoverboard. Somebody else made fossils out of bread and gummy bears. A fifth grader used a lemon to make electricity. A fourth grader made a fountain out of soda and Mentos. Somebody made a rotten egg stink bomb. It was cool. There were solar ovens, weather stations, balloon rockets, levitating magnets, exploding toothpaste, and glow-in-the-dark slime. Kids had created products using jello, paper airplanes, Silly putty, invisible ink, play dough, lava lamps, and walkie talkies. Yes, 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 the snowman said as he walked around the gym. I love it. Andrea's project was a big secret, but now she had to show everybody what it was. She pulled a sheet off the table, and you'll never believe in a million hundred years what she had under there. It was a volcano. I made it out of paper mache, Andrea announced. When it erupts, lava will shoot out of it. Oh man, why didn't I think of that? Andrea was sure to win the grand prize with an erupting volcano. She always wins everything. Why can't a volcano erupt on Andrea's head? Everybody in the gym was buzzing. Well, not really. We're not bees. Mr. Klutz. Wait a minute. Okay. Mr. Klutz stepped up to the microphone and made the shut peace sign with his fingers. Everybody stopped talking. Welcome to the elementary school science fair, Mr. Klutz announced. Blah, 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 blah. Young future scientists, blah, 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 blah. Unlock the secrets of the universe. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you, Dr. Snow, for organizing blah, blah, blah. And our special guest, Mrs. Elementary, blah, 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 blah. He went on like that for a million hundred minutes. What a snooze fest. Finally, he stopped talking. Let the science fair begin, announced the snowman. Here's a picture of uh, Dr. Snow uh, introducing the... Uh, 
science fair. <laughs> Isn't Jim great? Okay. Let the science fair begin, announced the snowman. AJ, start things off. Andrea, you can warm up your volcano now. Sure thing, we said. I flipped the switch on the remote control. The rotors on my drone started to spin. The drone rose up in the air over everyone's head. What a great idea, said Peter Porky. This could be a good way to deliver Porky's pork sausages. Red hot lava started to bubble up from the top of Andrea's volcano. Ooh, ah, everybody oohed and odd. Neil, show us how your catapult works, said the snowman. Neil put a marshmallow on the spoon and pulled the spoon back. Then he let go and the marshmallow went flying. That's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. Neil's marshmallow hit one of the rotors on my drone. The drone started spinning and flying crazily. Watch out, somebody yelled. My drone swooped down and knocked over Michael's fizz inflator. The fizz inflator fell on top of Alexia's exploding lunch bag. It exploded. That set off Ryan's pasta rocket, which flew up and knocked out another one of the rotors on my drone. The drone was zooming all over the place. People were diving for cover. Here's a picture. Oh, this is so exciting. A picture of AJ's drone flying crazily in the air. <clears throat> it's out of control, shouted Andrea. Run for your lives, shouted Neil. Call 911, somebody shouted. That's when something even weirder happened. I love it, shouted the snowman, rubbing his hands together. It's all going according to plan. <laughs> I'm going to take over the world. <laughs> See, I told you he was crazy, I said to Andrea. I knew he would show his true colors, said Alexia. Anytime. Somebody says, Mwahaha. while they're laughing, you know they're crazy. Normal people never say, Mwahaha. that's the first rule of being normal. I knew he would show his true colors, Alexia. My drone was hovering right above Andrew's volcano. Release the sausages, AJ, shouted Mr. Klutz. Your drone is too heavy. It's going to crash and hurt somebody. I flipped the switch that made the Porky's pork sausages slide off the bottom of my drone. The sausages dropped right into the middle of Andrea's volcano. Oh no, shouted Andrea. Arlo, you ruined my science project. The volcano is full of dangerous chemicals, shouted Andrea's father. It's gonna blow, somebody yelled. The next thing we knew, six pork sausages came flying out of the volcano. Ah! <clears throat> One of them hit Ella Mentry and she fell down. I'm being attacked with food again, she yelled. Oh, my leg. One of the flying sausages was about to hit Mr. Klutz on the head, but he dived out of the way and crashed into our vice principal, Mrs. Jaffe. The two of them fell on a table and the table collapsed under their weight. Da! Ah! <laughs> this is crazy. Everybody was yelling and screaming and hooting and hollering and freaking out. Yes, 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 shouted the snowman. It's all part of my master plan. I will rule the world. <laughs> Nothing can stop me. <laughs> I heard a siren outside. Oh, said the snowman as he headed for the door. I must escape to my secret lab and conduct evil experiments. Not so fast, Buster, shouted Mrs. Mentry. She stuck out one of her crutches and tripped the snowman with it. 
Galileo tackled him and wrestled him to the ground. Ha! That'll show him. <laughs> Let me go, shouted the snowman. I must take over the world. Hold that man, shouted Mrs. Mentry. First he attacked me with eggs and now pork sausages. That's the last straw. Why is she always talking about straws? You'd think the school would just buy extra straws so we wouldn't be running out of them all the time. At that moment, the outside doors opened and four guys wearing white coats came running in. Who's in charge here? One of them shouted. Our principal and vice principal were unconscious under the table they fell on. I'm in charge, said Mrs. Mentry. My name is Ella Mentry. The school is named after me. We got a report that some mad scientist was trying to take over the world, the guy in the white coat said. Here's your man, Mrs. Mentry said, pointing at the snowman. Take him away, boys. Well, that's pretty much what happened. We never did find out who won the science fair. The men in white coats carried the snowman out to an ambulance and drove away. When it was all over, Mrs. Mentry recovered and donated a million dollars to build the elementary hospital for frizzy-haired mad scientists who rub their hands together and want to take over the world. Maybe next year we'll have a plain old fair with cotton candy, rides, and stuffed animals. Maybe we'll throw eggs off the roof of the school again. Maybe a meteorite will crash through the window and knock over Mr. Cooper. Maybe we'll get some dolphins in the old porpoise room. Maybe the snowman will stick his head to the wall. Maybe elementary will be attacked by flying food again and demand to get her money back. Maybe grown-ups will stop saying, now, now, and there, there. Maybe Michael will invent anti-gravity underwear. But, and read the last sentence with me, you guys. It won't be easy. We did it, you guys. We read the whole book. It's a, you should have a feeling of accomplishment. I do. And uh, so that's, look, we've done four books now, four My Weird School books. That leaves only 57 more to go. <laughs> so I'm, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, uh, what are we going to do tomorrow? It's Friday. We finished the book. What are we going to do tomorrow? I'm not going to tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Tomorrow. We're going to do it tomorrow. Something special, a big, I got a surprise for you. Okay. Um, and, uh, but first, before we go, before we leave, how about a joke for the day? You ready? Here's the joke. <clears throat> Why do you never see hippos hiding in trees? Why do you never see hippos hiding in trees? Because they're really good at it. <laughs> All right. This is on you guys. I will see you tomorrow. Same place. Same time. Okay. Um, read like crazy. Wash your hands like crazy. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye now.